everybody. Uh, as you can see from the title of this video, we have a really special delivery lined up for today and I'm super excited. Uh, just woke up, as you can see here, um, we have a really full day. We're gonna take delivery of the car uh, within the next few hours. We have a full day of uh, meetings ahead as well. So um, let's go ahead and get ready and uh, start the day. Okay, we're back, made coffee, shaved, got dressed, and the next thing I usually do every morning is check in with the team. We have clients in both, uh, both coasts, and so me being three hours behind Eastern time here in California, um, I always make sure I check in with the team and our clients just to see if anything came up late at night the prior day or early morning each morning. So uh, just looking at Slack here, checking in with the team. Um, and Olivia and my wife Jan are both still asleep, so uh, we'll let them sleep a little bit longer. They'll be up, they'll be up soon. Then we have to get Olivia ready for school. But uh, the ETA on car delivery, last I heard, was eight to nine a.m. Um, so we might just have to play the schedule by ear today. Okay, just caught up on work for a little bit, so why don't we go outside and uh, talk a little bit more about what exactly is, is going down here today. Grab my phone and coffee, that's always a priority. Let's go. So the backstory is this. The GT3, my 2015 991.1 GT3, uh, is, a, is effectively sold um, to a independent dealer up in San Francisco called uh, San Francisco Sports Cars. And I've had my GT3 for about two and a half years, uh, but the goal is always to, at some point, move up to a GT3 RS. And uh, it came to a point where I was starting to experience a couple little issues with the car that kept you know, creeping up, you know, over over time, and as they'd come up, I'd, you know, address them, have them resolved, um, and overall, this has been a really, really good car. It's a solid platform, and, you know, coming from a 2005 Lotus Elise to the GT3 was a huge step up, um, but, you know, now I feel like the time has come uh, to make that switch into the RS. Uh, and so I ended up working out a really fair trade deal with San Francisco sports cars. Um, so the way this is going to work is they're taking this in on trade, obviously. Um, the transport driver is going to be coming here at some point within the next couple hours to deliver the RS in the uh, return trip he's going to take back. Uh, my GT3. And so we're going to do a little bit of a swap this morning. Um, we have the title to the GT3 in the house, so when the transport driver comes, he's going to make sure we get that all filled out correctly. And uh, what I did over the weekend was just to do a quick little walk around here. Uh, I got the car all washed and waxed up. So it is fully ready to go in what I'd like to call delivery condition uh, for the dealership. Uh, we do have custom plates, so the custom plates actually right over here. We're gonna get to keep those. Um, State of California, you can fill out an extra 
kind of DMV form to keep your, your vanity plates. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and keep track spec, at least for the time being. Um, you know, with the, with the RS being lizard green, there's obviously a lot of, you know, play on fun play on words we could do with a, a green themed license plate, but um, we'll kind of brainstorm some options perhaps a little bit later. Uh, we do have the BMC fi uh, air filters, which apparently come uh, stock as an OEM part on the RS car. I don't know if that was true in the dot one, but I believe it's true on the dot two, so we don't have to do anything with the filter. Um, and then everything else is largely cosmetic, things like you know matching valve stem caps. Um, this is functional, not from a performance perspective, but in that it diffuses the wind so that you don't get wind buffeting noise when you're driving at a higher uh, speed with the windows down. So these are carbon fiber. These came from GMG Race a little bit. Um, otherwise, everything on the interior is stock. No real changes there. Um, this is a really good spec overall for a Dot one GT3 in that you do have some of the uh, center console trim in carbon fiber, but more importantly, I love the paint, the uh, guards red, you know, kind of paint match st stitching on the interior. Um, the biggest update of which, though, was an option on these cars that a lot of people didn't spring for, and I wish they did, uh, were the carbon buckets uh, on this car. So that was a must-have option that did get retained on the RS um, uh, in terms of you know making sure that the RS had them. The RS that's coming does also have the Sport Chrono. That was probably my biggest um, you know disappointment with this car was that you know relative to all other Porsche options, the Sport Chrono on the GT3 is actually one of the you know uh, it's on the lower end on the cost spectrum. So I'm surprised that the owner that originally you know spec this car didn't didn't put the Sport Chrono in there. But we'll be getting it on on the new one. Otherwise, more cosmetic updates here on the front. You know what we did was. Uh, really just changed the headlight, the headlamp washers uh, from chrome to black. So the black obviously looking much better as well. We did the um, uh, black kind of uh, surround here in vinyl. Um, Kyle at KI Studios down in San Diego makes those. Um, the black accents just add a little bit more, you know, to the car. And the RS has the black headlamp housings uh, as well. Uh, which this one just had, I don't know what they call it, either you know, the chrome or the standard silver version. Uh, but we are getting the LED headlamps in black, which are gonna look absolutely killer. Uh, the only other thing we really did is just, you know, minor cosmetic stuff. We did the, the gas cap. Now, when I originally bought it, I thought it was gonna be an actual billet aluminum part. It just looks aluminum, it's actually plastic. <laughs> so, a little bit of a disappointment, but on the plus side, I guess it does save a little bit more weight, and that's probably what matters more. And otherwise, we are all in good shape. What I'll probably do here is call the transport company here in a hour or so, and get an ETA from them, and figure out the timing and the schedule for the day, and uh, go from there. Move lighter in. Hey guys, so Carr just got here. He's currently unloading it from the trailer, so we're gonna go take a walk out here. You can see it behind me getting unloaded. So let's go not bother him too much, but we'll try and get a peek at it real quick. Are you running on just no sleep right now? <laughs> uh, or did you get a little bit? Okay. Uh, I slept a little bit before I left and then caught a little nap uh, around Paso Robles. Okay, good. Definitely, definitely could have probably given myself a little bit more sleep before I left. But <laughs> I always, I had to go to Santa Barbara first, so I, I always think uh, that the shorter drive than it is. Yeah. So I always can't screw myself. <laughs> sure. was the first startup with the uh, Sharkworks bypass. That's got the Sharkworks center muffler delete uh, instead of the GMG like my dot one has currently.
is back in the garage. We just filled out all the title transfer paperwork, and there's mine out there getting ready to get loaded back onto the trailer. Uh, you mentioned to me it's going to be back in San Francisco to the dealership uh, tonight. So uh, I haven't even done a full walk around of the car yet. Uh, I've just been so so excited and have a ton of nervous energy. So we'll go through it in more detail later. But step one is going to be to wrap up this process here, and then we're probably going to immediately get this thing out for a quick drive. So obviously more to come. We'll do a full walk around later, but for now we'll just capture some of the details on the inside here. Okay. All right, here we go. There she is back in the garage. And uh, I didn't even get footage of him loading my dot one up onto the trailer because I was too busy showing the new one to my wife. But uh, what we'll do is we'll come around here and grab a quick peek. Hey everybody, so we actually just took the car out for a short drive. Now that all the initial excitement has uh, died down and I've had a chance to just collect myself and you know take the car for, for an early drive and just kind of go through it a little bit with a finer tooth comb. Uh, overall, super pleased with the overall experience and we're gonna be ultimately filming and, and doing a lot of content with this car. We'll likely stick to a lot of, you know, racing inspired content. We have a lot of tracks here in Southern California that I, you know, like to be out at, you know, quite, quite frequently. So expect a whole lot more to come uh, by way of racing content and, you know, just in terms of at least the minimal amount of modification that we have planned for the car. I will say, having just done an initial drive, um, the experience to a 991.2 GT3 RS compared to a you know dot one GT3 is literally night and day. Uh, I will leave you with that for now, but we will plan to go through um, you know a whole separate video in, in depth about you know what that means in terms of the driving experience and, and whatnot. Because I'll be honest, I used to be in the camp of how much different could it really be. Um, you know, the move up in point two on, you know, engine displacement and, you know, I know that they did things like, you know, redid the, the, um, the oiling on the, on the top end of the motor. But I think that one thing you learn with Porsche, if you don't know already, is that it is uh, very much a lot of small improvements that collectively add up to make a big difference, especially over time as you look back at the prior, you know, GT car generations. And so... Um, immediately, the front end is stiffer, um, much, much stiffer spring rates on, on the front. I think they're like double uh, from a you know, 3.8.1 engine to the dot two 4.0 engine um, is a big 50 horsepower jump. You get more low end torque. Uh, overall, the driving experience is much, much sharper. It's much more crisp. Um, the sound is even different now this you know car currently has the shark works on it my old car had the had the gmg on it um so you know that accounts for you know a big part of the sound differential but you know even when you look here at the you know side intakes um the downshifts just sound so crisp and you hear the intake you know as you're both accelerating and downshifting um, just a really awesome experience overall. So um, what we're gonna do over the you know the next couple of days is we're gonna get the car washed. We're gonna you know do fresh fluids. Um, the car's got about 2,600 miles on it, so it's basically just been broken in. I don't know what type of owner you know the the, the initial owner was, if he was a you know super aggressive driver or if he was more on the meticulous end. Um, but for safety and peace of mind, we're going to go through and do fresh fluids pretty much all throughout the car. Um, and, you know, here in Southern California, it gets quite hot. So, you know, a lot of the guys will still go out to the track, but not really the ideal time of year for tracking. But, you know, I'm certainly not going to wait until fall to really put this car through its paces. So, 
Um, we'll probably plan to do one or two track days, you know, over the course of the summer, um, you know, just to have a benchmark comparison in terms of, you know, the Dot One GT3. But overall, I am super excited. We have more content certainly planned on the way. Um, you know, my channel I'd like to consider as being, you know, a little bit more, you know, business oriented. So. Having said all that, it's like 98 degrees outside and I'm in the garage and it's getting quite humid. So uh, thanks guys for watching and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much.